worship her. Runa mande velete. Shada paruna mande. E kumbala diana mande ana palata. Shada mande velete. Sound. Come on, come on, come on. Yahweh, Yahweh. Wherever you are in this room, open up your mouth right now. Say, Shana Barata Balata. The Lord, the Lord of hosts, the King of glory, Yahweh. Shana Baruna Bandish. The Lord is here. I am a one more time. The Lord, the Lord, the host, the King of glory. Yahweh. The Lord of hosts. Shataya. The King.
Jesus is the audience of one. Make sure your worship is going to start in heaven this morning. to your praise and worship. Can you in one minute attach an expectation to your praise and worship? Can you blast in other tongues? If you know you came with expectation this morning, can you blast in other tongues? Come on, can you walk up to one or two neighbors and say this thing works? Come on, I'm not seeing somebody moving. Can you move to one or two neighbors? Say this thing works. Never this thing works. You can carry your devil if you want. 
permitted to carry is your neighbor but if you can carry your chair or carry something that signifies that you have broken free somebody run around with a shot shake at the past Chopper Lighthouse. Is there evidence that you are broken from the prison today? Is there evidence that you are broken from the cell today? I'm giving you the next two seconds to alert everybody in Portacot that something happened. If your voice is not loud enough, you can borrow your neighbor's voice. Give God a shout! Shut the cup on the cup on the cracker, the cat, the cat, the cat, the villagers. Shut the kid, three cats, go take a skit high. If brother cup on, let Rathos keep the cat, the cat, the cat. Somebody shout, I am free. I am free. Now you can smile to that beautiful neighbor and tell them, Welcome to the last day of total deliverance. Now walk up to 50 more people and tell them, you know what would make you uncomfortable? The next 50 people, announce to them what you were totally delivered from. Did the prison break work? Because it worked for me already. I am free from bondage. I am free from poverty. I am free from sickness. I am free from infirmity. For so who the Son of Man has made free, it's free indeed. Put your hands together for Jesus. 
Hallelujah. Said so church is sweet. Put your hands together for Jesus. You can have your glorious seats in the presence of God. Tell someone, welcome to church today. Smile to someone, say, welcome to church today. Say, neighbor, you look free. Am I free to send you my account details? Oh, only free people have this kind of conversations. <laughs> Praise God. Put your hands together for Jesus one more time. Wherever you're connecting from, on site, on telegram, welcome to church. Put your hands together for Jesus. My name is Mr. Dave Robert. And it's my honor on behalf of our lead pastor, Pastor George Izoma. And our resident pastor, Pastor Chidi Courage, to welcome you to the Gateway Experience. Remember that the reason Gateway International Church exists is to help you genuinely encounter God. Put your hands together for Jesus. Whilst we celebrate, whilst we get excited, please be sensitive and attentive to the Holy Spirit in this meeting. Make this your mountain of encounter today and you will never go back the same. How many of you believe you would never go back the same? A few things I would want to bring to your notice today. 2024 is our covenant year of Rohi, the Lord, our shepherd. May your life be the evidence of every covenant blessing in 2024 in the name of Jesus. Testimonies are a key part of worship. Any testimony we withhold delays manifestation of the next one. When a person says thank you, that's when God says Please go to the testimony stand just beside the accounting table over there and record and document your testimonies. Remember that when you say, I am gateway, it means that we belong to a unique community of believers. There are a few things that make us the church we are, and I would like you to listen attentively as I share them. We are a friendly and welcoming church. Put your heads together for Jesus. Come on, show someone that you're friendly today. You can smile to the person. Amen. We are a church for people who want to genuinely encounter God. We're a church whose members put God first in everything. We're a church that imparts people with the strength to handle whatever life brings. We're a church that turns ordinary people into leaders. How many of you believe that you'll become leaders in this generation? Amen. We're a church that honors marriages and blesses families. We're a church whose core assignment is soul winning and church planting. Finally, please be part of our online ministry by following us on all social media handles and platforms, Facebook, X, Instagram, Telegram, YouTube, and TikTok at GIC Choba. And follow our resident pastor, Pastor Chidi Courage, for faith-based materials that would help you boost your faith in your walk with God. Once again, welcome to the Gateway Experience. You are the best. You are the best. Quickly, I would like us to take our covenant confession, and I'll need you to raise your right arm with affirmation that God is doing exceedingly and abundantly in this place today. I would need you to repeat after me. I confess that God is a good God. Say it with audacity. I confess that God is a good God. He is my source. He has taken care of me. My life is sustained by his covenant. Today, today, standing on Romans 10, verse 9 to 10, I affirm that Jesus Christ is my Lord. He died and rose from the dead. His sacrifice paid the price for all my sins. He is in heaven now, but his Holy Spirit lives in me. Jesus is my life. I live by his word. I am led by his spirit. I believe that in him and through him, I am a member of the family of God. And very soon, smile when you say that, very soon, he will come back to take me home. Say, because of Jesus Christ, I am blessed of God. My DNA is supernatural 
I walk in prosperity. I create my dreams. I find favor everywhere. Kings come to the brightness of my rising. Nations open their gates and treasures to me. I cannot fail. Nothing dies in my hands. No power can hurt my destiny. Goodness and mercy follow me at all times. On my path, there is no sickness, nor death. This year, 2024, I receive the covenant of Rohi. The Lord is my shepherd. Gateway International Church is my spiritual family. I put God first. I pay my tithe. I am a soul winner. I serve in God's kingdom. My life works. My faith works. My relationships work. My business works. Everything works. My covenant place is at the topmost top. Every promise and prophecy of 2024 will be fulfilled in my life. There shall be no loss, no evil report in my life this year. Now I need you to say this with audacity. Only good things, only good things are permitted in my life. If you believe only good things are permitted and everything we have confessed will come to pass, put your hands together for Jesus with a clap ovation and with a shout ovation. Hallelujah. If you're shouting for Jesus, do it better. Hallelujah. Say prison break. Prison break. The, the prison has broken and we have escaped. Hallelujah. Church is sweet. Church is, just say your neighbor, church sweet too. Say neighbor, church sweet too. Praise the Lord. It's testimony time. It's testimony time. Luke 17, 15, one of them, when he saw that he was healed, came back to Jesus, shouting, praising God, I am healed. He fell face down on the ground at Jesus' feet, thanking him for what he had done. This man was a Samaritan. Jesus asked, didn't I heal ten men? Where are the other nine? Does only the foreigner return to give glory to God? And Jesus said to, to the man, stand up and go. Your faith has made you well. There are so many people that God has given testimonies but they have kept it in their pocket. But there are some people this morning who their faith has made whole and they have decided to come before the congregation of the Lord to share their testimony. With a round of applause, let's welcome the following testifiers. Now, so you they shout. Miss Chibuzo, Mr. Emeka Kingsling. Miss Excitement Nanji, Mr. Dave Roberts, Miss Emanuela Ago, and Mr. Paul David. Take the name again. Miss Chibuzo, Mr. Emeka Kingsley, Miss Excitement Nanji, Mr. Dave Roberts, Miss Emanuela Ago, Mr. Paul David, and Miss Bernice. Hallelujah. Tell us your name and what the Lord has done for you. Praise the Lord, church. Good morning. A very quick one. A couple of weeks ago, a very close friend of mine and business partner took ill. And that sort of affected me psychologically because this is someone I get to interact with on a daily basis. Um, long story short, we lost him last week. Before that incident happened, I was in my house, I tried to get some things that evening, and then I reached out for my gate. As I opened my gate, someone was slamming the gate at that time. And the next thing I discovered that the top of my finger was gone. Now, when I, when I listened to the testimony this morning, it prompted me to come out and testify. Because at that point, I actually felt like I was going to lose my whole finger. I was bleeding profusely. It took me to the hospital. And then it got funny because... For a week plus, it didn't heal. 
and I ran all the tests. I, I, was, I, was, I was clean. I didn't have any, um, any underlying factor that would make that injury not to heal. But glory be to God, that issue is done. I am healed. I am healthy. My, my emotional stability is back. My mental stability is back. I give God the glory. Secondly, one of the biggest prayer points for this year, I wanted to move out of my, my own apartment, and God has done that for me just last week. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Say the covenant works. Praise the Lord, church. Praise the Lord, church. Hallelujah. I want to testify this morning to the glory of God. Um, last week, Sunday, was our covenant works reenactment Sunday and I praise I the Lord. Is he audible? Because I can't okay. even hear you. Last week Sunday was our Sunday of covenant works reenactment re re and um, reenactment. Reenactment and um, part of the covenant. What I understood that part of the covenant was also our total well-being, our health and. That Sunday, I was not feeling well, but by the grace of God, I came, served, and after the prayers and the sewing and everything, I went back, but the situation seems to increase as if it's deteriorating, getting worse, but by the grace of God, this Sunday, I'm here to testify, um, even without <laughs> medication, God healed me, and um, I give, I, I'm here to give him the glory, thank you. Hallelujah. Your healing is permanent in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord, church. My name is Excitement Naji. I want to thank God for multiplying my bread, for blowing the trumpet of my business on a daily basis. I also want to thank God for adding another year to my life today. <laughs> Hallelujah. What do we say to her? Happy birthday and many more years. Praise the Lord, church. My name is Wama Bernice, and I want to thank God for his faithfulness upon my life and my family. And I also want to thank God for adding another year to my life today. Ah, what do we say to her? And many more years in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. My name is Emmanuel Abu, and I just want to thank God for being faithful. First of all, I want to thank God for the circle of friends that he has given to me. Very divine relationships that people that you can reach out to on any level both spiritually and otherwise, and God has blessed them with me. And they are all doing very well. I just want to give God praise. And still riding on that, I want to thank God because my friend, she, early in the year, we talked about her relationship with God and getting closer to God. And because she doesn't stay in Nigeria, finding a good church in Nigeria that she can be streaming and whatnot, I sent her church links and all that to her. Since then, her, her spiritual life has been growing. So she reached out to me last month and said that, Ella, I felt a very hard lump in my breast. I don't know what it is. I say beautiful. My pastor taught me that don't tell, don't call anything any name. Wait, in fact, this thing, it doesn't have a name and it does not have a name in Jesus' name. And we agreed that we we're going to be praying in the night about that thing. Finally, she went to the, because it was hard, it was visible. People that checked, they said that there was something that was as hard as a stone. When she went to the hospital, we thank God that it doesn't have a name. They said her hormones were just changing. So that is why that thing is there. And I want to thank God because when we spoke, something that came right, the same way he came, that's the same way that he has gone. We Hallelujah. Went. Celebrate God for that testimony. Good morning, church. My name is Shibuzo. So I want to thank God for three things. I want to thank God for the life of my brother. He almost went into surgery. That was late last month. But God intervened, and in less than one week, with medications and treatments, he got back himself, and he's fine. Also, I want to thank God for Friday, the first day of prison break. As at Saturday morning by 5, my mom called me and was telling me what happened the night before. That by, okay, she told me she went to prepare water for my dad to bathe. Like, he came back from work to prepare water for him to bathe. At first, she went in and came out. They took the light. Then she went back again with torch to drop the water there. So, she said when she went there, she saw a dead white fowl in their toilet and like she didn't know how when she saw it she was shocked like how come like a white flower is inside their toilet so when she told me that thing I, I, I asked her what time was like what time did she see that she told me it was around 8 30 to 9 between that time I told her that yes it was the time we were having prayers in church that God has has delivered us from every evil anything 
the devil was planning. And second, thirdly, I want to thank God. Today, she's marking another year that God added to her life. I want to give God all the praise. Hallelujah. The prayers we are making here is getting to your home. And testimonies will surely emerge in Jesus' name. And I want you to know, if you have not testified of what God has done, please don't expect him to do the next. Did you hear me? There are so many people here with testimonies, but they just put it in their pockets. Are you ashamed? Are you ashamed of Jesus? If you're not ashamed, you come and testify of what God has done for you. And if God has done something for you, you came to church, you got a testimony, pastor prayed for you, you got a testimony, and you don't want to testify, please don't ask God for the next one because he is actually waiting for you to come because that your testimony is going to trigger somebody else's faith to create the next one. Praise the Lord. Church, praise the Lord. My name is Paul David. I want to thank God for the gift of life. I want to thank God for my mom. It was on Thursday or Friday, she called, and she was like, her BP is high, 200 or whatever, whatever. So I was like, ah, what was this? So I came on Friday, the first day of the program, and the only prayer I prayed was that, without these drugs, let my mom beat people down, that this thing is becoming something else. Brethren, to God be the glory. <laughs> on Saturday, my mom called, and she was like, how did it happen? She didn't know. That she went back, and she's, fi she's okay. Hallelujah. I just want to give God praise for that. And secondly, I want to thank God for my health. On Wednesday, while we went to play a football match, while I was in the field, what have never happened to me before happened. Like, I couldn't breathe for some minutes. I was finding hard to breathe. The only thing that was in my, they were just saying, oh boy, go mark, now go mark. I couldn't move my body, but they were not understanding what was happening. Sometimes I just, after the few minutes, I just told them to stop me. I left the field. Then when I went home, while I was sleeping, it was as if someone was like pressing me and I was trying to fight the person. I woke up, I did the sign of the cross. I like, I was like, I just made some simple prayer. I told some of my friends, they were like, wait till the sign of the cross. You know, go pray. I say, I'm not that praying type. I prefer to pray. I, I prefer singing than praying. So they were like, okay, I sang. I slept again, and it was as if they were, the person came this one with a full force. I was like, ah, ah. And when I woke up, I came that to church that day. I was very down on Friday. People that knew me were like, ah, ah. Oh, boy, this one, we you know the IJ, what's happen? I said, guy, I don't understand. But I prayed that Friday. I, I prayed And what the life. Lord do? I just want to and give God the Lord do? that I'm the one. By his ear standing held. Hallelujah. Very Celebrate healthy. God. I want to give God praise. Hallelujah. Can you say by this sign? By this Conquer. Conquer. Hallelujah. Please let's listen to the following documented testimonies. Miss Gift Beckinbo is thanking God for adding a new age to her life on the 28th of March, which happened to be the same day her mom went for fibroid surgery. She's returning all glory to God for the success of the surgery. She says it's her best birthday gift ever. She's also thanking God for financial favor and good results in school. Indeed, this thing works. Hallelujah. Amen. Miss Yvonne is thanking God for provision. She said after months of hearing people in church give testimonies of getting a new phone, she tapped into the testimonies and right now God has blessed her with a new phone. She's also thanking God for his never-ending love towards her and her family. Amen. Miss Priscilla Uwambeze is thanking God for all the wonderful things he's been doing for her. Firstly, she's thanking God for saving her from the hands of kidnappers during December last year and February this year, though her phone was taken. Secondly, she's thanking God for the business she started since January. There's never been a day she didn't make sales, and God has been favoring her through it. Amen. 
Thirdly, she's thanking God for the gift of health in the life of her family, especially in the life of her sister. Her sister was diagnosed of kidney stone and was supposed to go in for a surgery. But during J2PG, she prayed against it and thus far, she has been recovering using just drugs. There will be no need for an operation. Hallelujah. Lastly, she's thanking God for the degree she started since 2016 that the devil delayed, but is about to come to an end. She says their results have been approved by the Senate, and what's left is just the induction date, which she believes will be at very soon. She's grateful for many more testimonies. Hallelujah. Miss Glory is thanking God firstly for the covenant of Roe working in her life and that of her family. Secondly, she's thanking God on behalf of her brother who got a promotion in his place of work even more than people who had been there before him. Lastly, she's thanking God for answering three of her prayer points in J2PG. Hallelujah. Miss Ehimeka is thanking God for her life and that of her family, for her younger sister's health and for her studies. Finally, she's thanking God for adding another here to her life. Praise God. Hallelujah. Celebrate God. I have three testimonies. Can you say God is good? Can you say the covenant works? It amazes me how people can come to church and they just carry their phone and be pressing recklessly. You're even saying something. They can't even respond because their eyes are on their phone. Please, let's be respecting Jesus most more. In Jesus' name, <laughs> praise the Lord. First of all, I want to thank God for a successful ordination. Grace found me. Hallelujah. Celebrate God. Um, I was Dickiness Ihoma Courage. Today I'm Pastor Ihoma Courage. Hallelujah. Secondly, I want to thank God for my nieces. They've been living with me, my sister's three children. I became a mother of six for almost two years. But God helped me and helped us. Today I'm standing here to testify what some people seek for for five years. God did it in less than two years. And today they have traveled, they're in Canada. I want to return all the glory to God. Thirdly, I want to thank God for delivering myself and my children from accidents. Can you say the covenant works? The blessing of the Lord makes rich. It adds no sorrow. See, if you don't know the word of God, eh, Satan will make mess of you. I want to thank God that what the enemy meant for evil, God has turned it around for good. In fact, my car is sweeter, finer, better than how it was. I want to say, Father, may your name alone be glorified. Can you stand up and throw your hands in the air? and give thanks to God who is the doer of all these great and mighty things. Masha Telebredus Kapayada. If you're thanking Jesus, you will do it better. If you're thanking yourself, you can thank him like that. But if you're thanking Jesus, you can make it better. If you're thanking Jesus, you can thank him better. If you're still in the prison, you can close your mouth. But if you're out of prison, oh, you can Father, lift we thank your you. hands. Father, we thank you. And thank As a family, better. Lord, we thank you. For your goodness, for your mercy. Shabrike deka baba barata. Shadeko barata deko pepe pelete. Shadeka baba barata deko pepe pelete. Lord, for healing. Father, we say thank you. As deka barata deka barata. Lord, for your faithfulness. Shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it. Oh, Father, we've come to say thank you. Father, we are grateful. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord. ICT, John 7, 37. The Holy Spirit just said something to me now as I climb here. He said more than 50 testimonies have been taking place in these two days of Prison break. He said more than 50 testimonies have taken place. Now, let us read together. In the last day, is today the last day of prison break? Yes, sir. Halagada. That great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. If any man thirst, 
You know, one thing you don't do is to tell another person to drink water on your behalf. That is one thing impossible. No man can drink water on your behalf. Even if your wife, I can't tell my wife, honey, I'm very thirsty. Go and drink water for me. And another thing that cannot happen is that somebody cannot test for you. So you know your test. I know my own test. You drink your water, I drink my water. So I don't know your own prison. I know my own prison. Pastor Favor shared yesterday his own prison. This morning, you are going to express it to God. That's your own task. You are going to express it. In the next four minutes, you are going to tongue. You are going to pray in the spirit. And every prison that is remaining, if there is anyone that remains, the one that didn't go by the word by Pastor C on Thursday and didn't go by the power of deliverance by Pastor Favor, today, why the word comes again? <laughs> today is the great day of the feast. And don't miss it today that it's the great day of the feast so that you will not be in a feast. I've spoken like my father. <laughs> we are going to shout three times, Holy Ghost, help me. Once we shout, Holy Ghost, help me three times, that area, that issue of concern, you express this in tongue. In the name of Jesus, number one, Holy Ghost, help me. Number two, Holy Ghost, help me. Number three, Holy, Holy Ghost, Ghost, help, help me. me. Open your mouth. <laughs>
Hosea 6 verse 2. Hosea 6 verse 2. Please I see. Hosea 6 verse 2. After two days, he will revive us. Have you been revived? Yes, sir. In the third day, which is today, he will raise us up. Amen. And we shall live in his sight. I don't know the area you want God to raise you up. It could be financially. You know your area, I know my area. Because if I lead you, if I tell you what to pray now, you'll be praying my own area. Imagine me now standing and say, Father, raise me up to have more children. My wife will tell somebody, I say, chain him. Chain him. You know your area. You know if your area, you want God to raise you up is financially. You know if it is married, maritally. You know if it is materially. You know if it's academically. You know if it is spiritually. Any area you want God to raise you up. Today, that area you are going to cry. Lift up your hands and say, Father. Father. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Raise me up. Raise me up. Then mention that area. Father, raise me up financially. Lord in England, Father in business, Lord in my finances, Lord raise me up. Shakeke para papa, Father raise me to help me, Father raise me to partner with me. Shakeke keke 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 keke, rapa pa 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 Watch me fly. In the, name of Jesus. in the name of Jesus. If that is for you, put your hands together for Jesus. Hallelujah. Ah, so quick. So quick. So quick to sit. So quick to sit. Okay, I can see people standing. and I can still see people sitting down. Yes. True prisoners. Yes. Yes. Okay. Now, prison break started on Friday, true? And day one, our faith was molded by the light of the word. The light of the cross, yes. And on Saturday, we... We did what? We fought. Now, today, will you agree with me if I say today is victory day? Today is a day of celebration where we celebrate the victory that we have won by virtue of us coming for day one and day two. Now, if you know that truly you have been victorious, I want to hear you give the Lord a resounding shout of praise. Wait, wait, wait. 
Media, please, can you help me put the scripture on the screen? Acts chapter 16. Acts 16. Yes, verse 25. And it says, okay, please, let's read together. One, two, go. At midnight, Paul and Silas. And the prisoners heard them. Next verse. And so, somebody say suddenly. Someone say suddenly. There was a great earthquake. By the virtue of the sound they produced from their praying and their singing. Now truly, if you know that you want to cause riot today. In the camp of the enemy. That enemy, that prisoner of addiction. That prisoner of poverty. That prisoner of sickness. That knows that you truly want to step out. I want to see you shout. Somebody shout. Somebody shout. If you are the victorious, shout. Hallelujah. Okay, hold up, hold up, hold up. Now, do we know the song that we used to sing back then in Sunday school? It says, victory, victory. One. Two. Okay. Victory, victory. Jesus conquered the devil. Matcha, matcha. Now, the Bible says that the power of life and death lies in the tongue. Now, I want to give you just three chances to display how victorious you are. So the first thing I'm going to do is tell you, if you are a winner, I want to hear you clapping. If you know that truly you are broken out of that darkness, that reason of poverty, of lack of one, of singleness, God's presence. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. My name is Khadija. Once a prisoner, but now a free man. A free born, yes. A free born of Christ. And me number one. You number one million. <laughs> Hallelujah. I want to take us through the following announcements. Please listen. With Jesus' joy and with the victorious shout, can we celebrate our online family? <laughs> Hallelujah. I believe that we have all been blessed. And for your tithes and your seeds and your offerings, please use the account details 070-6436-266. The bank is Access Bank and the account name is Gateway International Church, Choba. Our flagship program is upcoming. Somebody scream metamorphosis. Yes, metamorphosis means what? It means what? Change. And this year, our team is the inferno. And the fire started from last weekend. Yes, and we know that the kingdom of God must move forward. And for it to move forward, we need... Yes, you know, you know what I'm talking about. Yes, so for your seats, kindly use 078-922-7614. I will repeat it again. 078-922-7614. It's still Access Bank. And the bank name and the account name is GIC, Gateway International Church Choba Metamorphosis. When you make this payment, please send a proof to Miss Eunice Sunday, our accountant, with the phone number displayed on the screen. Workers meeting holds every Monday by 5 p.m. Workers celebrate Jesus. And it's compulsory for all workers, so do well to be here by 5 p.m. prompt, not 5.01. I believe that from prison break, when we've been starting by 5 p.m., you know, I believe that from the spirit of lateness, 
So when we say 5 p.m. now, you know it's 5 p.m. Yes, thank you. Foundation classes hold on Mondays and Tuesdays for all new converts and intending workers. It's 5 p.m. too, just at the Children's Church. So do well to be here. We have a prayer mountain that runs every weekday from Mondays to Fridays, excluding Wednesdays, because Wednesdays are for our midweek services. And the time is 9 a.m. daily. If you know you have something you want to pray about, do well to stop and pray. And the Lord will meet you this week at the point of your need in Jesus' name. Friday prayers are compulsory for all workers and leaders. And you know, we know how we do it. The 9 a.m. session is the morning session. If you can't meet up, you can come by 3 p.m. But by all means, make sure you come here on Friday to pray. Kingdom Marketing holds every Saturday, 10 a.m. We converge by 9.30 a.m. And we leave by 10 a.m. It's compulsory for all leaders, workers, and every true lover of God will hold on and commit to the great commission that says, go ye into the world and make disciples of all nations. Hallelujah. Now, altar of mercy with our lead pastor, Pastor George Uzunwa, continues tomorrow. Hallelujah. And it's from 11 p.m. to 12 midnight every day, Mondays to Fridays. And it's live on our pastor, George Izunwa social media page. And also on Mixellar Radio, the Gateway Radio. After that, do well to join our Midnight Breakthrough Prayers for GIC, hosted by GIC Chobarada from 12 midnight to 1 a.m. Links are shared daily on the platform. So do well to join and pray. Power Seed is our daily devotional and it's available at the account stand. If you'd like to pick up a copy, please do well to meet them after the service. We also have our communion supplements, the blood and the body of Jesus Christ in form of the bread. And we know that in this church, yes, we use the communion. And if you would like to get it, please go to the back after the service at the account stand to pick up one for yourself. Our midweek service holds this Wednesday, hallelujah, by 5 p.m. Amen iPad service resumes this month. Hallelujah. Is somebody excited? Someone say victory dance. Say victory dance. Now we are victorious. And the music and arts director, it said we should come and do a victory dance. And featuring this month in ministrations, we have DJ Manny. We have the amazing Taram. We have our very own minister, Amaka. If you dance today, say, uh-huh, uh-huh. Yes, if you did not dance, I don't know why you are sad. Honestly, I don't know. We are free. I don't know why you are still bound. You have one more chance to redeem yourself. The service is still going on. Amen. And then we have minister Chimobi. Hallelujah. Also ministering is our resident pastor, Pastor Chidi Courage. Somebody celebrate Jesus. If you're excited for relationship and a door like me, somebody scream. <laughs> Hallelujah. Okay, let me tell you a secret. Relationship and a door is one of my favorite events in Choba Lighthouse. Can you tell me why? You don't know why. Okay, because on that, every relationship and adult, we receive wisdom that you can never find elsewhere. And if you find a bit of it, you can never get it for free. But we come here and we get it for free from our resident pastor and his amazing wife, Pastor Ihoma Courage, the relationship therapist herself. So do well to find yourself here next week, next week Sunday. And the topic is, babe, let's settle down. Why not ladies, they shout? So brothers don't want to settle down. Ladies, if your man did not smile, just know that you are in the wrong place. Just. So, I'll see you next week Sunday by 4.30 p.m. when we start our game zone and the main event kicks off by 5.30 p.m. And yes, our highest soul winner giveaway is still on. First prize, can you scream it out loud? 
second prize and the third prize. Yes, and I have a strong feeling that I am winning it this month. Yes, because this month is my month. I've broken out of that prison of not inviting people to church. Don't worry, you'll see it on that day. Just come. But make sure that as you come to church, don't come alone. Now, all directorate heads and assistants are reminded of their meeting after service today. And join us next week Sunday for our third Sunday of... Our third Sunday of... Yes, settlement. First service begins by 7 a.m. And second service begins by 9 a.m. In the first service, we do what? But in the second service, we... Yes. Now, if you know that you are truly screaming today, can I hear you scream just small, small, small? <laughs> Hallelujah. Today is a unique service. Prison break started on Friday, Saturday, and today is the grand finale. I believe that you have come here with your victory dance, ready to give God the praise and break out from whatever chain that is holding you finally. Right about now, I'm about to bring up stage a unique set of people. Yes, these people, they are like a family closely knitted into one bond. And it is evident from the sound that they produce whenever they come together. Their sound is not just harmonious. It's not just spirit-filled and anointed. It is also very dynamic because we know that in this church we are not normal. Now, ladies and gentlemen, if you know that truly you want to be blessed today and your hands are not too busy and your mouth too is not chewing anything because eating is prohibited in the house of God, I want to hear you give the Lord a shout of praise as we welcome Zoe Nation!
I've been in baseless for years. No breakthrough. Where will I leave this land? When? <laughs> Am I not beautiful? <laughs> what do they have that I don't have? My mother did not get married. My sister did not get married. Now me, I don't have anybody. I've been in six different relationships, but nothing came out of me. What kind of veil is covering my face? Jesus, come. <laughs> Messiah, come and save your children. <laughs> we are tired of being in this bondage. <laughs> Messiah, come and save us. Come and save your children.
Say we coming. Say we coming. Can we take it up? Say we coming. Yes, we come. Yes, we come in the name of the Lord. Yes, we come in the name of the Lord. Shaka, Papa, Papa, Sayate, come on. Can you wave your hands? Can you raise your hands? Wave, 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 wave. Can I see you jump, 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 jump? Now who born? You know who born? like my pastor said, never underestimate Zoe Nation. <laughs> now celebrate the ministry of Zoe Nation. Hallelujah. You may be seated in God's presence. Amen. She's the winner of Aviva Voice Challenge Season 3. She's a music director, a songwriter, a singer, and an amazing minister of the Most High God. 
She started singing professionally as far back as 2019. And she has a couple of songs to her name. Somebody say, Baba Eshe. How many of us know Dwell? Hallelujah. And she has an EP to her name as well, titled Incense. It's streaming on all platforms. Hallelujah. And her latest single has been making waves around the globe and impacting lives. She's the convener of the annual music concert tagged Psalms of Tega. Right now, I'm about to bring up stage a spirit-filled, spirit-fired powerhouse vocalist of the Most High God. There is a reason why we call her the porter. She's the beloved daughter of our pastor and his lovely wife. And when she sings, heaven recognizes her voice. If you know that you are ready to hear and see the devil, the prison shake, you're ready to experience and hear of an earthquake in the sound, in the house of the enemy right now, by the virtue of the ministry of this amazing woman of God, I want to see you rise up on your feet and celebrate the amazing, the amazing minister, Ogene Sega. Put your hands together and give God praise wherever you are in this room. Can you release your worship language to Jesus? I need you loud, 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 loud. E mama kose bebe di adashi momo satayna. E le mama na na ine kofi busana na. Your glory fills this room this morning. Your glory fills this room this morning. Your glory fills this room this morning. E mama mara baba mara baba bashi adeke sele. E la baba rasha da baka mateski. Oh, Father, we give you praise. Thank you because the prison doors are broken. Thank you because the gates are broken. The iron, the bars of iron have been cut in asunder. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. Somebody scream out loud. Thank you, Jesus. One more time, scream out loud. Thank you, Jesus. Can we please put our hands together for my pastor, his amazing, beautiful wife, for this opportunity. Please let's celebrate Pastor Chidi and Pastor Ihomaka. Yeah. Jesus. Celebrate your pastors. Hallelujah. Please, let's lift our hands to Jesus. Oh, be Say, oh, glorious God, we praise, we lay our crowns, oh, we bow down and worship you, Jesus, one more time, with intentionality, say, oh,
You're the one who reigns forever. Hey, yeah, hey, 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 yeah. Blessed. Oh, my Namasha. Feel the Lamb of God forever. Amen. Now raise your voice and cry out. Can you 
put what came to swallow you in the, in the equation. Jesus, you swallowed up depression for my sake. You swallowed it up. You crushed it. You nailed it on Calvary. You made an open show, a spectacle. You disgraced depression.
lift up your hands and just thank him for his presence his presence is a gift his presence is a gift inside outside can you lift your hands throw your hands in the air high above your heads and just magnify it Father, we thank you. Father, we bless you. How many of you are already getting like the river is climbing from the ankle level to the knee level and beyond the knee level to the loin level is overflowing right now. It's about to become a river. That's a good one. Please appreciate Minister Tega for me. God has raised men in this house. That we can actually do a program, world class, with our, with our in-house artists. Our in-house artists are one of the best in this city. And I can say it with boldness, any day, any time. All we are believing God for is announcement. Please, you can go on YouTube and give her a follow. Ogenetega 044. That's her handle. Go ahead on YouTube, give her a follow. Ogenetega 044. Um, she's not Igbo, but it's sounding like Igbo. 044. That is one name. <laughs> so, and you can just give her a follow. And nothing is wrong with appreciating our in-house stars even with a seed too. When they bless your life. Make it a culture. Some of them have programs. Shegun Aniye has Music O'Clock. Uh, Tega has Psalms of Tega. And these programs run in millions. Only to bring Sumi Sola from Lagos together with her husband to be in the event. It's going to cost like in the million rand. Yes. And you know, just anything you want to do and you want to do for God in a standard way cost money. Metamorphosis we are doing in two months' time. The budget is 20 million. Bringing in artists from outside Poracot, flying them with their PAs and hotel and all of that. We're just trying to see what the um, cost for the SUVs are. And for a standard SUV now, I think the least we've gotten so far is about 70,000 for a day. Se without fuel. 70,000 for a day without fuel. When we're talking about metamorphosis, I say it's 20 million. Oh, yeah, do the program now. Do the program. So when we say shout hallelujah, the name of Jesus is very heavy. It requires money to raise, raise it up. So it's not a 20 naira kind of arrangement. 15 around. No. It requires millions. As Minister Priyode was singing here on Friday, did you see him shake? No. That thing that is running out there is a 110 kV soundproof. FG Wilson. As they are shouting, diesel is running. One liter is more than 1,000. And one service will take 70 to 80 liters. Otherwise, you will see Shege. Yes. Serious shake. And the lengthier the service, the more the consumption. I promised the music and arts people earlier on in the year I was going to supply diesel for their rehearsals. And then we were buying at a particular level. As at now, the diesel has doubled in price. So all the budget I had to see how we can assist them. <laughs> Times two. As of a desire. Please, if you love Jesus, the gospel is expensive. But we're not begging you. Nobody can help God. God helps men. Uzzah tried to help God by carrying the ark. God, God made a breach on him. That means God divided him into two. Who are you to carry me when I didn't assign you? It's a privilege for you to give God something and you collect. He said, if I'm hungry, I will not tell you because you are too poor to solve my problem. It's a privilege. And you gave to God and he collected. 
We don't talk like this because we are arrogant. We talk like this because we are confident. There's a thin line between arrogance and confidence. So everybody should relax. If we say our landed property is 150 million, in your very eyes, eh, this year, you will see the land. <laughs> it's called grace. It's working. Put your hand on your head. By the time I drop this microphone this afternoon, there will be no trace of bondage in your life. Amen. Whether you are inside, outside, or online, before I finish today, there will be no trace of bondage in your life. Amen. When your aim arises, you are the one God is talking Amen. about. Open your mouth and make it your prophecy. Open your mouth and make it your prophecy. Jesus Christ. Amen. Father, we thank you. Thank you, Lord. One more time for the gift of your presence. We want to say thank you. Thank you, Lord. There are many places where your name is being called, but they are not honored with your presence. I am no but here we call your name and you answer. Amen. Father, when you called me, I answered. When I call you, answer. I am Let your people see wonders. Amen. In the name of the Father. Amen. And of the Son. Amen. And of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Say amen like a mass choir. Amen. Amen. Congratulate your neighbor to the right and to the left and get seated. Those of you at the overflow, I am seeing you and God is seeing you clearer. And I know that the same grace on this altar circulates across board. And you will testify in Jesus' name. Can somebody say louder, amen. Well, this is prison break, grand finale. Put your hands together for Jesus. I saw, And also the, um, the second Sunday, who look out for my liking. If you are saying that, amen, say that, amen, like a believer. Very quickly, because of time, turning prophecies into platforms for warfare. Turning your prophecy into platform for what? Warfare. Turning your prophecy into platforms for what? I want to hear a voice. Turning pro your prophecy into platforms for what? Turning your prophecy into platforms for what? Warfare. You know, on Friday I started... I talked about the light of the cross. I said that at the root of all affliction is what? Is what? Darkness. The powers of darkness are at the root of all human affliction. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and against powers and against the rulers of what? Darkness. And I said that the only answer or the most authentic answer to darkness is what? Light. So Romans 13, 12 tells us to put on the armor of what? Light. And I told you on Friday, I said, the light you need to dismantle all the works of darkness is the light of the cross. Did you get that? And you heard some testimonies here. Hear me? The only reason why you will not get a testimony is because you didn't believe this word. Caesar, I don't need to lay hands on you if I laid words on you. You didn't hear what I said. I said, I will never need to lay hands on you if I've laid words on you. Hear me, child of God, whether you are inside or outside, hear me and hear me good. As you believe the prophetic word today and you war with it, oh, the devil that will stop your testimony is too small. See, 1,000 demons are too few in number. 1,000 demons are too small in number to stop your prophecy. The reason is because you took prophecy and went to sleep. You heard that testimony of that brother. He said he saw something. And he said he's not the praying type. 
That is the problem. It's not that there was anything wrong with the cross. It's that he didn't weaponize the cross. Oh, you didn't hear what I said. It's not that anything was wrong with the cross. It's that he did not what? Weaponize. He didn't weaponize the cross. If he had it been had it been he used the cross as a weapon that day? Oh! Somebody would have died for him. It's just that he didn't weaponize it. <laughs> Let nobody in this church say I'm not a prayer person. <laughs> because life is war. And just in case you don't believe when your life war, war you know that it's war. No, you didn't hear what I said. If you are hearing me, say, I hear you. Look at neighbor, say, neighbor, there is war. And don't wait for your life to war, war. Before you know that there is what? War. There are many cute people in this church. Who ain't seen nothing yet. They ain't seen nothing yet. <laughs> Before I was talking like that. When they pressed me in the night. And I was saying, G, 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 G. God could not show up because G is not Jesus. G is Yam. Yes, but when I swallowed the word, I smoked the word, I drank the word, it entered my medulla of Blangata. When I breathe, I breathe scripture. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I want you to be rugged though. Because this is just the first month in the second quarter of the year. Time day to show working. Time day to show working. No they sleep for keke front seat. No they sleep for keke front seat. Time day to show No they sleep for keke front seat. No sleep for keke. Show working. Show working. By now, I don't teach you. So then you suppose don't craze by now. You do day no man. Now why sit and they mess up? No sleep for keke front seat. Slap your neighbor. Say neighbor. No sleep. No sleep for keke front. No sleep for keke front seat. Why you for? Why you go sleep for keke front seat? You crazy? Even your nation, your nation, your nation no normal. Why you go normal? Your president no normal. State no normal. Federal no normal. Local government no normal. No normal. Nobody normal. Even for this kingdom, from the day of the body until now, the kingdom of God no normal. And only abnormal men collect their portion. Woto, woto. Oh. I came in peace. No grimy verse. I came in peace, no grimy verse. Oh yeah, can't I? <laughs> Make I day cooling down. Make I day cooling down. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Look at neighbor and say, neighbor! neighbor! War with your prophecy. No sleep for keke front seat. If your neighbor asks you, what did you learn in church today? Tell him, no sleep for keke front seat. Whoa! Whoa! Arise, shine, for your light is come. It's war. If you think it's not war, why have we not shown? Arise, shine, for your light has come. It's war. If you think, if you think it's not war, why have we not shown? Then he explained it to you. He said, for men do not light a candle and put it under a bushel. So if God did not cover you, who covered you? Yeah. War. Many of you are better than where you are now. The only missing element is war. Only warriors become conquerors. Whatever you tolerate, you can't terminate. Whatever you resist cannot remain. The issue that you're not a warrior. Somebody say, Pastor, Pastor, I don't know what I did. Things are not working. We are not working. I don't steal. I don't fight. I don't fornicate. I don't do. I say, You have told me what you don't do. So what do you do? 
It's not enough to say what you don't do. Tell us what do you do. Now you have told me you don't steal. You told me you don't fight. You don't lie. You don't fornicate. So what do you do? Because when you have done, you, have, you, have, you are now a Sadducee. Because they have rules and regulations. Thou shall not, thou shall not, thou shall not, thou shall not, thou shall not. So now what do you do? What shall thou? Shallant thou do something? As thou shall not do many things. So what shall thou do? This one thing I do. At least, at least let there be one thing you do. Some people in each other doing fashion parade. All the worship, we have worshiped God, they have not worshipped anything. Or you have joined one service unit and serve, you don't want to serve. Worship God, don't deserve, pray, you don't want to pray. Waiting, who do you this thing? First oh. Timothy, First Timothy 1. First Timothy 1. First Timothy 1, 18. Turning your prophecy into platforms for warfare. Somebody say, I got a prophecy. And I got a war. Say, I got a prophecy. And I got a war with my prophecy. Look at number say, neighbor, I got a prophecy. And I got a war with my prophecy. First Timothy 1 18. Everybody read one, two, go. Uh-huh. This charge. Now, wait, wait. Charge is not encouragement. Charge is instruction. It's a commandment. Just in case you don't know. This is Paul telling his son Timothy. No, Paul is the warrior man. He's telling his son, Timothy. He said, this instruction, I commit to you, son, Timothy. According to what? The prophecies which went forth before on thee. That thou mightest what? War. A good warfare. A good warfare. I told you the other day, I said, a fight is not good until you win. When he said, fight the good fight of faith, it's only a good fight because you won. How many of you have ever fought before? And you were beaten. When you fought and they beat you, could you qualify or describe that fight as a good fight? But the one you fought and you won, what did you call it? Good fight. A decam, decam. It's a decam, eh? A decam. He face hard weight. Incollect, incollect, uppercut. It's a good fight because you won. Then he's telling you, I charge you, Timothy. But remove Timothy. Put Chidi. Timothy is in heaven. You are the one in Nigeria. You are not understand what I say because when you read scripture, you, you ostracize yourself from the context of scripture. That's what makes you miss out. As you are putting Timothy now, you are missing out. No scriptures of any private interpretation. But holy men of God spoke as they were carried along. So what God says to Timothy, as Timothy goes, she the collect. You are not hearing what I'm saying. If this one was for Timothy, then it is irrelevant now. Because the moment Timothy goes, the scripture expires. Does it make sense? This commandment I commit to thee, son Chidi, according to the prophecy that has gone forth ahead of you, that thou mightest war. Why is it a good war? Because if you war, you will win. If you ever war, you will win. The reason you are not won yet is that, in fact, you are not a failure. You have only not succeeded yet. You didn't hear what I said. I said, you're not a failure. You have only not succeeded yet. And that time frame is dependent on any day you wake up to fight. Straight forth your hand to this altar. In the name that is above every name, under the weight of my father's band to Pastor George Zuma, I release a fighter's anointing in your spirit. I release a fighter's anointing in your spirit. I release a fighter's anointing in your spirit. Whatever makes you look at the world like a moron, I curse it in the name of Jesus. That thou mightest war, a good warfare. Why do prophecies fail? Just two reasons. And then I close. Are you ready? Number one. Why you take no action? Number two, when you don't believe it. Simple. First Thessalonians 5.20. Let's start from the second one. When you don't believe it. Why do prophecies fail? Number one, when you don't believe it. First Thessalonians 5.20. Everybody read. One, two, go. Uh-huh. Come on, get 
get to a read one to go. Despise not what? Professor. See, when a God anoints a man and the man begins to speak, you think he's speaking his words. No, the Bible says God confirmed the words of his servant and performed the counsel of his messengers, Isaiah 44. So when the man of God stands, God is standing behind him. When God calls a man, God backs him up. For faithful is he that called thee, for he also will do it. The one who does it is different from the one who said it. Because the one who is saying it was called by the one who will do it. He said, despise no prophet science. When you see a man that is called, as he declares God's word, some people say, mm, that's what they talk. That's what they talk last week. Don't mind them. It's a bit talk. 19. Leave him. Make it just the talk. Now hype man when he be. Now motivational speaker when he be. Despise not prophesies. Luke 1 45. For blessed is she that believeth. For there shall be a performance of the things which the mouth of the Lord has spoken. I want you to know that every time prophecy comes, it must not make sense. God sent an angel to meet a virgin and say, virgin, you shall conceive and bring forth a child. Tell me how intelligent this prophecy looks. And then the woman was not, Mary was not believing the prophecy. Why? Because it wasn't making sense. How can Papa get up one day and just say somebody will marry in four days? If it's you, will you say amen? Be honest. You are not in a relationship. Why will you say amen? The man who married you for this, you shouldn't be afraid of him. Yes. Even in a relationship. And the lady just said amen. And guess what? She just said, oh Lord, amen. We're not in a relationship. And an old friend she had known. They've been talking about it. Now, you know, there are these people that are very close to you. You have been waiting for them to say something. And he has not said anything. That you, you have lost hope in him. The, the man got up after service and said, you know, I've been meaning to say something to you. But it's just this afternoon, it dawned on me that you are the person I've been looking for. Since we have already known ourselves, there's no need for courtship. Can we go and see my parents? Just like that. Straight up. Straight up. <laughs> <laughs> so I said, straight up. Yeah. <laughs> In the name that is above every name, may God shock you with the prophetic word. May God shock you with the fulfillment of his prophetic word. That your amen is too local for my liking. But the moment he said that thing, the Bible said, Mary said, how shall this thing be? That's the, first, that's the reason why people don't despise it. How, how shall it be? A woman must meet a man. And she must even be in a particular mood. It's not like any time. It's not any time. There is a particular time. When the calendar is open. When there is date. When the date. How do they put it? When the farm has fertilizer. If not, you plant seed in vain. So this woman now is a virgin. Who is a virgin? Somebody who has not done it before. So when God says you will build a house, and you have not built a house, you are a virgin. Because a virgin is somebody who has not done it before. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Look at the person, neighbor, I'm a virgin. Oh, these guys want to, these guys want to provoke the anointing. Who is a virgin? Somebody who has not done it before. So, if you have not gotten a car before, in the car world, you are a virgin. Gang, gang, gang. Gang, gang. It's like I will join Revolution Dance School. He said, you shall conceive and give birth to that. The woman said, how shall this thing be? He said, wait, do you know who I am? I am Michael. I am Gabriel that stands in the presence of Yahweh. Where I live, there are no impossibilities. And then he said, well, I don't understand this thing, but be it unto me according to your word. She was crazy enough to believe a prophetic word. And the crazy God did a crazy thing in her life. Permit me to say that, Ross J. Ross J, no verse. No verse. A crazy, a crazy too. Now Chris, Papa Bon Chris speaking. Ross J, calm down. They're coming down. How can a woman prophesy? Prophecy. You only said amen. When I was in Abba many years ago, 
How many of you know Abba? You know in Abba, there's no oil company in Abba. One day, where's Max? Is Max here? Where's Max? Max, uh, we will see after now. You will write a book about my stay in Abba. It's a compendium. Hmm. My journey in Abba. I was preaching in Abba. You know where you go in Abba? I was preaching in Abba. And I said, in the name that is above every name, before this year is over, somebody will be connected to an oil company. <laughs> hey, company. This prophecy works in Portacot. You can't work in Abba. What, what is it? Is Shell in Abba? Is there a Jeep in Abba? Only police station. That prophecy, you shouldn't say amen. Because it means that you'll be a fair attendant. You shouldn't say amen. That lady just said amen. And she came and dropped a seed. And dropped a seed. And do you know what? That one of my daughters, that, that my daughter is very, very intelligent. In the reverse. <laughs> She's very, very intelligent on the reverse. You didn't hear what I said. Very, very intelligent on the reverse. Those who know, know. This lady came out because no intelligent person could have said amen. No intelligent person could have come to drop a seat. She just came out and only her said amen. And, drop. and she didn't ask herself, is there a company in Abba? And it has already come out of my mouth. I now recover. I say, ah, wait, what did I just see? Because even what I'm doing now, I'm the microphone. Since I'm talking, have you seen me open? Hmm? There's what I wrote. But there's something running inside me. Two weeks later, she said, Pastor, I'm supposed to be on my IT board, nothing. But my lecturer just called me and said that, uh, is it Chevron or Shell? Was it Chevron? Chevron. Lagos. That they want to pick some people, so he has some slots. And should I apply? I said, are you crazy? You, you can imagine how intelligent she is. So, she said, that time you said that thing, something just told me. So when I went back to my seat, I not thought. She had said the image without thinking. I said, but, I said, okay, don't worry. She went, submitted. When they finished, guess what? Only her. <laughs> Even me, I was doubting it too. You know why? Her, her grammar is not correct. So, I wonder who interviewed her. <laughs> you are not in the, see, on the, on, honestly, eh, if I was one that interviewed her, she, me, if it was in my hand, she would not pass. Even though I'm the pastor, she will not pass. I'm now being frank with you. My name now is Franklin. See? <laughs> There's no way. Somebody that cannot say witchcraft, say winch, witchcraft. I say witchcraft, not tea, no tea. Winch. Craft. <laughs> Do you know that this lady, she submitted this everything, they collected her. One day we went to the office. She, said, she called me and said, Mama, Say, guess where I am? You see, I'm in my office. People that are better than me are serving me. <laughs> Despise not what? Prophesies. Say, white people are in my office. White people are in my <laughs> How? It is me. I wasn't believing it. Until she sent seed. Bua. Say, oh, is this what Chevron looks like? Ekwete Lukeba. Aduke Munaka. Akwate. Tiara Suveve, Gilo Zunana, Etu Kabai, Zuzu. The reason you have not done anything is because you have not believed the word vest. So even the one I preach on Friday, I'm not believing. The one Pastor Faber preached, I said, you have not believed it. The one I'm talking now, you are still thinking it. You are analyzing it. And analysis leads to First of all, believe it. When they told Thomas, Thomas, your master has arisen. Thomas said, where? How? I was there when they nailed his hand. You forgot I was there. Not that they told me. I was there. They took that six engine and drove it through his fibia and tibia and fibula. And they nailed it to the honor and radius. And the scapula. I said, yeah. He knows all the names. That's why doctors don't have faith. They know too much science knowledge that they don't have revelation knowledge. They said they put, they put, I was here when they put it. They put the crown on his head. They swore his side and broke the rib cage. Rib cage. <laughs> and then blood and water gushed out. It's not possible. How did he rise? 
how did he rise? Then the Bible said they were in a place in an enclosure and Jesus entered. Without door, without window. Because where the master is, everywhere there's a wall, there's a way. Gayage Doba. He is the way, the truth, and the life. He messed up the laws of matter and particle physics. He broke through a wall and entered and said, Thomas, wait. When he came in, he just said, Thomas, this is my hand. How did he know the argument that ensued before he came? He said, look at my hands. Touch my hand. Touch my side. Thomas touched his hand. Touch his side. Say, hey, Lord, I believe. Jesus said, Thomas. So, because you saw me, you believed. I am not impressed. But blessed are those who believe when they have not yet seen. John 20, 29. You want to be a man that carries prophecy. You must believe the prophetic word. And God says, by his stripes, you are healed. Everything in your body can say, I am sick. But you declare, by his stripes, you are healed. The second thing after believing is where I'm closing. You have to war with it. You have to act on it. When the prophetic word goes, when, when God said to Elijah, go show thyself to Ahab and I will send rain over Israel. Elijah came out and said, um, Ahab, I'm the one responsible for the drought in Israel. God said I should show myself and he will send rain. And, Eha, and Elijah went to sleep. And for 24 hours, there was no rain. Elijah said, God, you want to disgrace me. You said I should show myself to Ahab and you will send rain. I've shown myself. And now there's no rain. And then God said to him, wake up from your slumber. You're a child. Don't you know arrangement? When I prophesy, you war. That's the technique. When I prophesy, you do what? You go to battle. So what did Elijah do? The Bible said Elijah went into seven dimensions of prayer. He began to pray and he put his head in between his knees. And I studied Akilo Minaka Dogaya. I discovered that in the ancient time, when a woman is about to give birth, it's not like now when they have modern um, um, tools or technology for giving birth. That's what they call the betting stool. Where the woman sits down and opens her leg and she begins to push so he took the posture of a pregnant woman because a prophecy is a pregnancy and until you push you cannot deliver are you hearing what i am saying he opened his legs put his face in between his knees took the posture of a pregnant woman who is pushing out her next level hear me your prophecy is like your receipt prayer it's like your argument. You know, when you've bought something, they give you a receipt. And sometimes, there's, there's, there's contention. What do you do? You bring the receipt. and say, no, this is my receipt. This is my name. This is my signature. This is the date. Your prophecy is the receipt. Your warfare is your argument. You are stating your case with the receipt. The receipt has been given to you. When it said, arise, shine, it's a receipt. When you're not shining, you bring the receipt. Thus said the Lord, arise, shine, whatever power resisting my shine, I crush you in the name of Jesus. You are using the receipt. You are using the receipt. That's what the believer needs to do. Hear me? Everybody inside, outside. I'll close in a few. But please help me get this. Help me get this illustration. In a movie, there are many characters. And there's a script. In a movie, there are what? And there's what? The script. For you to act the script, you must study the script. You didn't hear me? For you to, start to act the script, you must study the script and know what the script says. Can I shock you? Life is a drama. God is the script writer. You are the actor. And the scripture is the script. Life is a drama. God is the script writer. You are the actor. And the scripture is the script. So, what do you do? You look for any character you like. Yeah. Because no character is of any private interpretation. You look for any character you like and play that character. Oh, yeah, there is... 
Lazarus, the poor man, there is Abraham in the script. Even me, if I join Shekinah, I will not act gate man. If you look at me, you will see that. Now, please, any role your, uh, your, they ask you, your director asks you to act. Just play. Just act first. But as you have seen me now, you can see it's only easy I can act. I just, only you go. If it's an epic, uh, whatever. So business tycoon. That's what I, you can't ask me to act this man. I cannot act this man. Well, I, I will even do it well. Because I might insult the, the ogre. <laughs> when my children's uh, cousins went to Canada, so my children were crying yesterday. My wife was calling, calling the people in Canada. Say, look at uh, your cousin. I told them, I said, Kai! They are crying because they don't know the script. They say, it's only a person that knows the script. <laughs> How can I go to Canada and watch white man bum bum? White man should wash my bum. <laughs> yes. You cannot go to UK and clean table. No. For what? I won't go to America and carry white man shoe. When I go to US, I remember I've been saying this thing, but you will see. You think I'm a comedian. You will see I'm prophesying. When I go to US and they will carry my shoe, I will snap it and put it on Facebook. You will remember that some day, years back, pastor said... And it came to pass. He said, I want to, I want to Japa. No, I don't want to Japa. Japa means you are running. Why are you running to? Why are you running? Why are you running? But not by running. No, no, no. I will go there by, by dominion posture. Enter there with people at the airport waiting to receive me. That is the mentality. Play the script. Play. Look at Ikwane Koda. You know what the Bible says concerning Jesus? That he entered the temple and opened the book. Luke chapter 4, verse 18. And opened the book and saw the place that was written concerning him. So, of him. Look at it. Luke 4, 18. Look at it. Luke 4, 18. I said, life is a drama. God is the script writer. You are the actor. And what? Bible is script. That's why it's called the script chose. Script chose. Look at it. Start from verse 17. Start from verse 17. Verse 17. Kalusiam bragadaha. Let's start from verse 16. I don't want to start with and. Let me try my best to avoid and. Oh, another and again. Let's start from verse 15. Oh, help us, Lord. Oh. Uh. Okay, okay, because of time, because of time, because of time. Now read, everybody want to go. And he taught in their synagogues, being glorified of all. Verse 16. Uh -huh. And he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. Hold it. Remember, I told you about Nazareth. Nazareth. I told you that Nazareth was not a nice place. Nazareth was a place of hoodlums. So when they say Jesus of Nazareth, it wasn't an accolade or, uh, you know, it was a mockery. It's like saying Jesus of Ijesha or saying Jesus of uh, Ajegule or, or Jesus of Diob. Okay. So, and he came to Nazareth, which is Diob, where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, his tradition, look at, he went into the synagogue in Choba Lighthouse on the Sunday and stood up for to read. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Verse 17. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. Isaiah lived before he came. But they brought up Isaiah. Look at, and he, and when he opened the book, he found the place where it was written. Verse 18. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. They didn't mention his name. His name is not there. They didn't say the spirit of the Lord is upon Jesus. He saw a place where they said the spirit of God is upon me. Who is me? Nobody's name. Anybody can play that character. Watch. The name Jesus is not in this scripture. The Bible said the spirit of the Lord is upon me. Who is me? Anybody who has faith to play that character. Look at it. And the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me. Who is me? To preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance in prison break to the captives, and the recovery of sight to the blind, and to set at liberty all that are bruised. Verse 19. Quickly, quickly. And to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Verse 20. And he closed the book, and he gave it again to the minister, and sat down. And all eyes...
Verse 21. All eyes were fixed on him. Uh -huh. Verse 21. And he began to say unto them, This day, this scripture is fulfilled in your eyes. He saw a place written concerning him. Who told him it was him? Did the Bible say concerning Jesus? The Bible said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Who is me? He just entered into the character and began to act. So you look at the character in the Ayake Tomanagaha and in any movie, actor and one. Oh. In every movie, the actor cannot die. Have you seen a movie before? Pia, woo! There will be suspense. Pia, pia! They will bomb the building. Say, hi, hey, this man has died. All of a sudden, boom. He's coming out from the other side. So you look at the scripture. Anywhere you see what you like, start acting. See, like, Abraham was old and well stricken in age. And his eyes were not dim. In the name that is above every name. I am a seed of Abraham. My eyes cannot be dim. Whether your father died of blindness. Your mother died of blindness. Your auntie died of blindness. Leave that your family character. Enter the character of scripture. Pick any scripture character and begin to war. I am a seed of Abraham. In my new family tree. Our eyes cannot be dull. Jacqua katakatoka tekata. Number one, if I start laying hands on you, there are over 800 people here inside and outside. You want to tear my shirt? Let me lay word on everybody. Don't go to Church of Prophecy, you where they will deceive you. They will say there's somebody here, there is a, a big tree in your village. In every village here, there is big tree. Say there's like one or that tree. There's that tree. It's close to the house. So relax. Enter the script. Enter the script. Enter the script. In the script, we don't die early. We saw in the script that I shall not die. But live to declare the works of the Lord in the land of the living. We saw in the script that you shall serve the Lord your God. And he shall bless your bread and water. And remove sickness from among you. He said the number of your days you shall fulfill. So I am in the way nation. I am in the media team. I am in the drama team. I am in the sanctuary team. So according to the script in Exodus 23-25. I will not be sick if I serve. You sickness, what are you doing here? He said, we bless your bread and water. That means every, because everything that is sickness in your body comes principally from what you eat and what you drink. So there's an additional blessing that comes upon your food and your drink if you serve. Not if you mope. Because there are people who are in church, they're too big to serve. How much do you have in your account? Only 20 million. God lost his respect because of 20 million. Only 20 million. That's why you are now too big to serve. They say, why, 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 join this service unit. They say, oh, all these small, small boys. Ah. Now, so did they talk about us before, before. But see where, see what the Lord has done. They said, this small boy before. This was started about eight years ago, nine years ago, eight years ago, they're about in a classroom, having no shape, no form. Void, no, no microphone, no comeliness. Many of you are coming to this church now, you'll see, oh, so you're, you're, you're doing like this. So look at him, he defies pouring perfume on you. I say, mm -hmm. that time, if I finish preaching, I'll be smelling. Because the amount of heat that will come from what it is not permitted for you not to smell. And I didn't mind. Some people like him now, he's laughing. Look, I think he has killed like two snakes. In that former church, before inside the bush. The church was inside the bush. So he used to be one of the people that used to come early. And kill snake. Inside our church. Because the church was inside the middle of the bush. Now some of you are sitting in front of Christian. Say, Pastor, you preach fast. Preach fast. If I catch you. If, if had it been, I saw you earlier. I would do you many things. Now I'm hearing that somebody... That, Somebody say, act, 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 act. Say, 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 neighbor, 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 neighbor. The script is 
before you. Look at neighbor. Say, neighbor, the script is before you. Locate a favorable character and ask the character. That's all. All is finished. I'm done. Locate a favorable character and do what? Ask the character. I saw Abraham. I saw Lazarus. I refused Lazarus. I asked Abraham. Lazarus will go to heaven, but we suffer ahead. Abraham will go to heaven, but in dominion. Why should I follow Lazarus? No. Why should I follow Lazarus? I am following Abraham. I am a seed of Abraham. Abraham married a beautiful wife. So why should I marry an ugly wife? I follow Abraham. Oh God, I'm not saying, I'm not saying. You didn't hear what I said. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Because you have you have right to choose the select your character from the script. You know what um, Hebrews chapter ten verse five and six said? Look at it. Hebrews five, Hebrews ten five and six. Look at it. Barasko tayadaha. Everybody read. Wherefore he cometh unto the world. He said, sacrifice and offering that would not, but the body has that what prepared for me. Uh huh. In burnt offerings and sacrifices of sin, he had no pleasure. Uh huh. Uh huh. Verse 7. Uh -uh. Then he said, I, lo, I come in the volume of the books as it is written of me to do thy will. Volume, books. Act any favorable character. I saw in the character that they didn't die on time, so I won't die on time. I saw in the, I saw in the script that as the days of a tree, so shall the days of my people be. You know, there are some trees in your village that are older than your father. I saw in the script that three score and ten shall be their days. That is 70. He said, but by reason of strength, they can do four score. That means as, if they are stronger, they can stay for 80. But when you look at that one and it's not okay for you, depending on, I still saw in the script, with long life will I satisfy you? With long life will I satisfy you? That one is in Psalm 91. Verse 16. So, satisfied means that if I give you 60, I will ask you, are you satisfied? I will say no. <laughs> then I give you 70. I will ask him again, are you satisfied? I will say no. Then I give you 80. I will ask him, are you satisfied? I say no. As long as my kidney, my lungs, my liver, everything is working, I will say what? No. Then I saw in Genesis chapter 6 that 120 days shall be the days of man. 120. It was Moses that wrote Genesis. How long did he live? 120. It was David that wrote Psalms that said three score and ten hour days. How long did he live? 70. So your revelation sets the pace for your manifestation. So anyone you, any character you choose, that's one you can manifest. I see another one. Occupy till I come. The only thing that if you, if you follow that one, you might be useless by that time. Because technology has advanced so much that, look at now, people are talking tech. Have you ever seen that older people don't know anything about tech? They're looking at young people. Looking at young people. There are some things now that Titus will be talking about. Like, what is he saying? That the angular distance, is say, ah. When I was his age, there was nothing like that. At least in Nigeria. So I don't even know. All those people that are in that uh, tech place, they are speaking plenty, plenty English. All those say, ah, we'll just put it like this, we'll touch this, touch that. And I'm like, ah, the phone, there is, is it my phone? Their phone can do wonders. But it's not doing wonders in my hand. It's because the generation in which I lived and the one they are living, it's not the same. Don't look at me like that, I'm not your mate. <laughs> I'm in my 40s. Some of you are even 17, 18. One small boy just come and tell you, Pastor, do you know I developed an app? Ah, app? How? App? Do you know I don't understand that mystery? What is coding? I don't know. I have no clue. Ask an old man in his 40s or his 50s to start coding class. He will, he will fail. Woefully. So if you, if you use occupy till I come, you might be useless before he comes. So when you reach a particular place where you are okay, just say, Maranatha. Come, Lord. Lord, you just, you just gather your children like Jacob. And say it's time to go. Not that accident kill you. No, no, no accident kill you. Just you just die your children and say it's like what people are talking now is beyond my this thing. So I think I need to leave so that people can 
He had a place. Don't do like Queen Elizabeth. <laughs> Some people are not understanding. Queen Elizabeth stayed until Prince Charles became useless. Became very old. <laughs> Queen Elizabeth stayed ruling at how many years old? 20. At least by 70, she would have said, okay, let me just go. At least let Charles have something. She now stayed. She wanted to stay to hundred so that Charles would die before her. God now off her light. So as God off her light, Charles came on the scene. He's already old. Now I'm here and he's struggling with prostrate. So people are not, they're planning for. <laughs> they are planning because they can't manage the prostrate and he's old. So how long did he rule as king? Very short. So people are talking about Prince Williams now. That's the grandson of Queen Elizabeth. So you too, when you stay and you have conquered, that's why you need to start shining on time. When you reach like 80 and your eyes are still clear, your companies and everything, your son should take over early. That's why you need to marry early. All of you who are up to 30 are not married. I will, I'm planning you. Because you want to do anti-covenant practice in our church. 27 benchmark. And all of you that past 30, see me after the service. All of you that if you're up to 30, you're not married, now raise your hand, please. I'm serious now. Whether inside or outside, God is seeing you. You're up to 30, you're not married, raise your hand. Just raise your hand. Raise her, raise your hand. No, not, not, not the ladies. Because they won't marry themselves. The men will, will make the move. Raise hand, quickly, raise hand, raise hand. Do you see that some of them have been lying? Because they are afraid and they are ashamed of their profession. This year is your last year. By 30, you are normal. When will you build the conglomerate? And when will you hand over to your son and watch him do well and put him through? When will you do that? No. Let me tell you something. In this kingdom, we read our funeral. Ah. Look at Jacob. The Bible says he came and gathered the sons together and said, Let me tell you what will happen to you in the future time. He said, This is you, Reuben. This is you, Simeon. This is you, Levi. This is you, Dan. This is you, Judah. Then he sat down and slept. It's called honor, dignity. He shared the inheritance. Not that he was like this. He was actually saying, my heart, my heart, my heart, my heart. Hey, 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 hey. Chudubem, Chudubem, come and hold me. Chudubem, Chudubem. Chudubem, come and hold me. Chudubem, hey, 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 hey. Oh, well, hey, hey. What kind of madness is that? Don't mind me. If I was a comedian, I would have been funnier than Ali Baba. Yeah, relax. Don't worry. Don't worry. I know what I'm doing. Just relax. And he gathered them together. So, no. so you check that character. So as I am now, when it's time for me to go, just gather my children. And the grandchildren will also be there. Because, of course, the children are already getting big now. So grandchildren will be there. I'll say, okay, this is your own. And the house in Lekki is your own. The one in Banana Island is your own. The one in... Uh, in France is your own. The one in London is your own. You take the one in Bordeaux in France. You take the one in, in, in Paris. You take the one in Adelaide in uh, Australia. Take the one in Tennessee. You take the one in Philadelphia. You take the one in Tokyo. You take the one in... Uh, and they'll say, oh, daddy, daddy, don't go. Daddy, don't go. Daddy, now. Daddy, I say, calm down. I say, calm down, calm down. So I'm rehearsing it. Not that his heart will be doing pum pum. <laughs> pum, 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 pum. Say, hey, hey, hey. Press it, press it. <laughs> That shall not be you in the name of Jesus. How can his heart be doing boom boom? Somebody say, locate the script. Any character you like, pick it up and walk it into manifestation. That's the whole story. First of all, believe it. Second one, get into the script of scripture. Pick any favorable character. 
Make it your daily confession and warfare. That's all. That's all. The last one you need to do, raise altars. A man of altar is a man of the spirit realm. If you are here, you are not, you are not altars. Talk about places of sacrifice. Why do we give offerings? Why do we give tithes? Why do we make sacrifices once in a while? There's a program. Somebody called me yesterday and said, Pastor, I was commanded by the Holy Ghost to see a, sow a seed in, 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 in five digits. Tens of thousands for prison break. And to come for you to speak a word over my life. I've not seen the person. I said, do I know you? You said, no, you may not know me. I said, okay, no problem. When I see you today. So please, protocols, if you see the person, give him or her priority. That is how it is. There are people that God has showed, asked them to sow some dangerous seed. They don't know what to do. They use it and give woman. <laughs> than by wig to waste his future and weaken his future. Than by wig. Than by wig. By by wig for her at least. She will like me more. Pieces coils. So they use it to buy iPhone. So when you buy an iPhone with your ties, you lose your vision. of altars. Why am I so confident? Like, do you know that the grace of my father, Pastor John, is the one who works in my life? Do you know I'm so confident about it? You know why? 152%. The kind of altars I've raised is too, is too brutal. I know what altars never die. Sometimes when you need a particular grace, that investment in that altar I've made will arise and begin to speak for you. That's part of the last thing that Papa talked about in the first service. I want each and every one of you, these are the ways to fight your prophecy into manifestation. Fight it into manifestation. Metamorphosis is coming now. We have millions to spend. Ask the Lord, Lord, which altar am I raising for this one? Because whether you like it or not, the program will be a, ma a ma massive success. Massive success. What is bringing the power? Grace! What altars have you raised? What does that have you raised? As a church, somebody was asking me, how come? This church is full of young, young people. How come? I say, ah, it's great. So, all that we have raised is, is, is brutal. Some of you don't know how things turned around for you. You still see money in your business. It is steps we took from the altar. There were times we cleared church account to go and drop seed. I say, Papa, speak a word. So that what he says will happen here. That when I stand here now and I say, let somebody prosper, somebody will come out and just say, Pastor, I just did small thing. Somebody gave me a contract, 4 million, 3 million, 8 million, 10 million. What is happening? All tasks are speaking. And I scatter it to doing impact, impact retreat in January. I saw this, you know, Pastor of House of Rock, Enugu, Pastor Edwin Bible, and I met my wife. I said, I want to introduce my wife to you. And we dropped another seed. He spoke a word. He said, let that church become the church of the community. It's happening in his life in Enugu. Why will not happen here? Altars. When I met Apostle Selman in 2020, I know the words he spoke. So I'm seeing Papa. I'm seeing different graces. So don't think that we are joking here. can stand and things will happen in his life. There are altars that speak for him. And if you will not meet a demonic priesthood, go and meet the holy priesthood. If you will not meet a holy priesthood, then look for a demonic priesthood. But you must raise. May God give you understanding. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Finally. I've said finally before, she Wait. Wait. Next Sunday is supposed to be relationship panadol. But, and the team is what? Babe. Babe. Let's settle down. But next week Sunday is not going to be relationship panadol. 
We will do, babe, let's settle down next month. Because next week, Sunday and Monday, our grandfather and the Lord, Dr. Pastor Paul and Enche, will be live at Gateway International Church. Put your hands together for Jesus. So Sunday evening and Monday morning, he's going to be at the altar of Mercy Grants. And we are going to be streaming live from here. Put your hands together for Jesus. It will not be honor for us to be doing a program when a man of that caliber who speaks over this commission by divine privilege is at the headquarters ministering. Do you understand? So we are going to move relationship panadol for this month to next month. Is that okay? But the team remains static. Is that okay? Babe, let's settle down. That is for the third Sunday in the month of May. Is that okay now? I just need to clear that because next Sunday evening is going to be the apostolic invasion of our grandfather and the Lord, Dr. Pastor Paul and Becky and Nenche live at the altar of mercy grounds. Put your hands together for Jesus. So I said that to say this in closing. What I said to you on Friday, never you in your life joke with it. If you want to see supernatural victory, understand the cross. 1 Corinthians 1, 18. Put it up there. In your prayers, all of you who have been serving here, you're wondering, why have I not gotten a testimony? Let me show you. Weaponize the cross. Use the cross as a weapon and as a tool of warfare. See, the same way you can use a machet, you can use a dagger, you can use a sword, or you can use a gun. Use the cross in battle. See, testimony will flow woto woto on this altar. Look at it. Everybody inside, outside, read. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. Anybody who is not born again does not understand what we're talking about. Look at it. But unto us who are saved, it is what? Did he say it is like the power of God? That means buried in the cross, trapped in the cross, is the raw power of God. Anytime I told you, when church historians told that story about Constantine, and I told you when the missionary history historians in Nigeria told the story about Mary's lesson, is this approvable? That Mary's lesson came into Nigeria in her 20s. They didn't know much about the anointing of the Holy Ghost. What did Mary's lesson? They just told them about the power of the cross. She was moving from forest to forest in her missionary journey. Went to some dangerous forest and encountered a lion. She took leaves, leaves, leaves from the tree and shaped it in a cross and brought it before the lion. The lion saw it with the revelation behind the action and backed off. If the evil beast can respect the cross, I can tell you, sons and daughters, weaponize the cross. That wicked man in your father's house, see what will handle him. You now go and do battle with what I've told you. If you are waiting for me to go to family deliverance in your village, your village will be too far. I've told you, I've put the weapon in my hands, and my spirit, my conscience has cleared me that I have not hid any revelation that God gave me from you. There is nothing, if you want to see the raw manifestation of the power of God, invoke the cross as your weapon in prayer. Anything that is too hard, bring the cross there and the cross will crush the opposition. Rise to your feet. Somebody, this is prison break. Is somebody out already? Inside, outside, jump to your feet and shout hallelujah! Jump to your feet and shout hallelujah. Right now, wherever you are, inside and outside. If you have not identified with the cross of Jesus Christ, your deliverance is not near if you are not saved. You may have a billion dollars in the bank. One day, every mortal will die. You will leave this earth realm. All those monies in the account will be left and inherited by someone else. Cars will be empty. Houses will be empty. Loved ones will die. And loved ones will take sand and put on their faces. 
the only salvation you need eternally is receiving Jesus as your Lord and Savior. The Bible says we brought nothing into this world. We will exit with nothing. Dust. As dust. God brought us out. And to the dust we will return. Everybody inside and outside listening to me. Hear me and hear me. Every day. While you sweated this afternoon at night. Put your hand on your neck. Scratch. Take your fingernails. Scratch. Guess what you see? Death. That is God reminding you that this thing came from the earth. And one day it will return to the earth. Any day you scratch your body and you see death, that is dust. It's a reminder that we came from dust. We will return to dust. Life was not given to you to offend God. Life was given to you to serve God in preparation for a better life. This life given to you was not given to you to offend God. It was given to you to serve God in preparation for a better life. If you are here and you know your life has been offensive to God. And this prison break conference can be your spiritual birthday. Whether you are inside or outside. This is your finest moment. Place your hand on your chest. Let me say that again. Life was not given to you to offend God. Life was given to you to save God in preparation. And in exchange for a better life in eternity. If your life is not serving him, you are at risk. No matter the account balance. Balance your hand on your chest. Everybody that needs to rededicate his life to Jesus. Hear this and pray this prayer after me. Say, Jesus, today I've heard your word. And it resonates as truth in my heart. It is the light shining in my spirit. Right now, I believe it was for me that you died and rose again on the third day for my justification remove my name from the book of death put my name in the book of life and let your blood wash me clean inside out i declare you are my lord you are my savior you are my healer you are my deliverer thank you for accepting me in your family in jesus name amen wherever you are inside or outside and you said this prayer with me make your way to the altar right now Jesus is here waiting for you. Come on. I give myself away. Wherever you are, inside, outside, so ushers, help them, direct them to this place. Don't waste a second. Don't let the devil deceive you. If you said that prayer of rededication and salvation, find your way to the altar right now. Inside, outside. Thank you, my brother. Thank you, my sister. Come, 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 come. Shatokai. Jesus is here waiting for you. Come, 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 come. If you are coming, make it faster. Make it faster. Thank you, my brother. Thank you, my sister. Come faster. Come faster. It doesn't matter where you are in the overflow. Come, 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 come. My sister, come, 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 come. A lot of people turn the side. One minute, one minute remaining. Don't stand where you are. Come, 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 come. Those of you in front, can you stretch forth your hand to the altar and just say after me, say, Jesus, today, by my dedication of my life to you and the declaration of your lordship over my life, right now, I give you all of me, body, soul, and spirit. Let your precious Holy Spirit dwell in me, live in me, walk in me, and give me the empowerment to live the God life. All my days on earth, I receive that empowerment in Jesus' name. Father, you have done this for us for 20 years and more. 
I'm still counting in joy. Right now, as I put my hand upon them, let that grace and more be communicated to their spirit. Grace to abide in God. Grace to save God with their life. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Holy Spirit of God, breathe upon them. Breathe upon them. Overtake their will and keep them in the body until their days on earth are over. In Jesus' name. Amen. The Lord bless you. Just follow the protocols. The Lord bless you. The Lord bless you. who has been blessed inside and outside give the Lord a radical shout can you look at your neighbor and say neighbor look at your neighbor and say neighbor is your neighbor feeling sleepy it's not even up to midday is it it's close to with all the administrations and everything don't worry we are closing now look at your neighbor and say neighbor come on look at your neighbor say neighbor enforce your prophecies through warfare. Believe them. War with them. Locate the scripture. Any character you see, act it. Why it into manifestation. And finally, weaponize the cross and raise altars. That's all. Prison break season one is done and dusted. All right, it's time for us to honor the Lord with our tithes. If you have a tithe, a tithe is one tenth of whatever God gives to you by divine privilege. Lift up your hands, the ushers will get in your direction. They will give you a tight envelope. In the envelope is a leaflet. Write your name and amount for record purposes and come to the altar. You can redeem in cash. You can make a transfer to the account detail on the screen. You can also use your credit cards or your debit cards at the account department towards my left, at the back left hand side, which is your right um, after now. But get the tight envelope and come to the altar very, very quickly. Do that now. If you are in any of the overflows, walk to the front of your overflow. There will be a minister standing there um, to also minister to you. Come. Because of the crowd, anybody sitting from anywhere halfway, come. Those from the other back, there will be a minister. Just stand in front of the minister that is before you. Come, 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 come. Come. You have it tight. Those who believe that God is their source, they don't struggle with the tight. Those who believe that they are their source, they are experts in themselves. Woo. Come. Wherever you are, whether outside, at the back, just come. Bacon on any of the ushers, they will give you a tight envelope. In the envelope is a leaflet. Just write your name and amount for record purposes. Wherever you are, the prayers is getting in your direction. Lift it up above your hand and just say after me, say, Father, come on, like a believer. Anywhere the communion stewards are, just walk up to them. There will be. And if there is a concentration on one side, you can move to the other side. Usher should be able to do that so that we can get out of here on time. Lift up that tide very quickly and just say after me, say, Father, in the name of Jesus, in obedience to your word that says, bring all the tide to my storehouse and prove me now if I will not open the windows of heaven and release a commanded blessing. Right now, the commanded blessing of increase, the commanded blessing of multiplication, the commanded blessing of favor, the commanded blessing of preservation, the commanded blessing of creativity is released over me right now. The hand of the devourer breaks over my life and the works of my hands. Right now, by your favor, I encounter increase on every side in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. I bless this ordinance when Abraham met Melchizedek, he gave him bread and wine, which was a symbol of the cup of the blessing. And from that day, the promise became the blessing. Right now, let every promise and prophecy meet with fulfillment in the name of Jesus Christ. You are blessed. You can drop the tithe and then take the communion and declare your expectations. Take the tithe. Drop the tithe, take the communion.
and declare your expectations. Drop the tights, take the communion, declare your expectations. All right, everyone, package and offering. If you have done that inside and outside, everyone stand to your feet now and package a quality offering. Everyone stand. Everyone stand and package a quality offering. If you are making a transfer, the account number is on the screen. If you are listening to us on Telegram, the account number is 706-436-266 Access Bank. You can make a transfer and the blessing on site will reach you online. Lift up. Everybody, please be upstanding. We don't give to God with an attitude of content. We give to him with reverence. <laughs> Lift it up above your head and just say after me, say, Father, come on, like a believer, say, Father, in the name of Jesus, in honor of your word, in honor of your word, that says, do not come to the presence of your king empty. Right now, we give you this gift and we connect to your altar for grace, for the supply of grace, for the supply of manifestation and for remembrance. In the name of the Father and of the Son. And of the Holy Ghost. Can somebody say louder? Amen. All right, the ushers will move around inside and outside. Just deposit your seeds with joy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I said, Hallelujah. I said, Hallelujah. Now, um, I already told you that next week Sunday is um, our third Sunday of settlement, and in the evening, is going to be the apostolic visitation of our grandfather and the Lord, Dr. Pastor Paul. And then put your hands together for Jesus. And to that regard, we are moving the relationship panadol to the month of May. And we are preparing heavily. Now, Metamorphosis 2024 is drawing closer. Put your hands together for Jesus. Now, okay, let me ask you a question. How many of you enjoy Prison Break 2020? Wow. And this is just the maiden edition. So you can imagine what metamorphosis will look like. So by next Sunday, we'll be telling you all the lineup of ministers of the gospel and music ministers that will be here. And I'm trusting God that it's going to be crazy this time around. And we're going to do stuff we've not done before. We are looking at up to at least 10 billboards standing in the city of Port Harcourt. Put your hands together for Jesus. So people have made some pledges for billboard ads and all of that. Please, if you have not made your... Um, sacrifice for metamorphosis. We need that to come in early. We are already paying in and booking in for, for flights because the earlier we do some of the bookings, the better for us. Booking of the hotels, booking of this and that. That's the account. And there are people who God has blessed who is going to be partnering with this program in the million realm from seven digits, one million and above. Please, that is what the account to use. When you do that, you send the receipt of the transaction to that number or to our secretary's number, and it will be documented. If you're not in our church WhatsApp platform, please meet any of the leaders, and you will be added to the church WhatsApp group so that you can be um, um, officially um, put, updated with information from this house. You are giving half a million and above. Please, there are about seven categories the, those who are giving in seven digits, one million and above. Those who are giving like 500,000 and above. Those who are giving like 200,000 and above. Those who are giving 100,000 and above. And then 50,000 and above. Those are about the categories. We had two months to do that. All of this month and all of next month. So you can still pay in batches. But we, we've got a lot to do. We still have a lot of lights to buy. We have lots of cameras to buy. We need to still buy an extension of our LED screens, put your hands together for Jesus. A whole lot um, needs to be done for the Metamorphosis Conference. We still need to hire LED screens for outside, the outdoor LED screens. 
Uh, I mean, if you go out now, the whole compound is filled with people. So when we are bringing in all the artists for metamorphosis, where do you think they are going to be? Obviously, they'll be across the road. Put your hands together for Jesus. So we are trusting God that we are going to put LED screens for all the days it's from the 26th to the 30th of June, 2024, across the road. Our father in law, Pastor George Uzuma, is going to be here for two days. <laughs> so, and others, we are not done. We'll soon bring out the whole... Uh, line up, but we are sure Peter Sinokopi is going to be here. I mean, it, it, it's going to be it's going to be crazy. So, at the, we are expecting that each of these, um, all the overflows across, we are also trying to talk to the university so they can give us permission to use the space across the road. We'll do some sand filling and you know trying to level the place so it can also take and accommodate people if we are not going to block the express. Uh, so blocking the express will be, be our last option. Praise the Lord. So they can now do one way for the gospel. Can somebody say amen? amen. That's your amen is too local for my liking. Amen. Please, um, where is uh, Ebube? I want to see the publicity people today. There are some billboards. We need to go and see their prizes for the billboard because now we want to take the billboard advance. Maybe if possible, if we don't get to Rubokuru, at least we'll be required. Put your hands together for Jesus. And this other way, at least maybe till maybe NTA, so that we can extend the borders of what God is doing here. But we're going to saturate all over Alakaya, Choba, and Alu uh, with our publicity materials. The Lord take us higher together in Jesus' mighty name. Am I offending you? Okay, Kachineke means you in Jesus' name. I think all the information has already been passed. And then our workers meeting tomorrow is very, very important for all leaders and workers. We're already planning for metamorphosis. Thank God for Prison Break 2024, done and dusted. Can we celebrate God one more time? And then we are also in our season of Kingdom Expansion and Rewards. So the last Sunday of this month, we are going to be rewarding the highest soul winner for the month with a whooping sum of what? 70,000 Naira. Second prize, 50,000 Naira. Third prize, 30,000 Naira. So keep inviting your friends. We're going to be counting on Wednesdays and on Sundays. And also, good performances apart from the first three will also be giving consolation prizes. So keep talking to people, keep persuading them, keep inviting them to God's house. We appreciate your effort and God will bless you even much more in Jesus' mighty name. All right, so very, very quickly, if you're here and you're watching with us for the first time in Gateway International Church, we didn't do this during prison break. So even if you started coming from prison break and you know who invited you, but this is your first day worshiping like, not on a Wednesday, on a Sunday. It's your first day worshiping on a Sunday. Can I see your hand lifted above your head? First. Wow, I can see hands. Wow, wow, this is awesome. This is awesome. This is awesome. Whether inside or outside, the ushers are seeing you. Please, can you stand to your feet? We want to identify with you and we want to celebrate you. Stand to your feet. If this is your first time, watch me with us on a Sunday. Stand, stand. Wow, wow. This is fabulous. Come on, Gateway Church. What are we doing? If you are sitting anywhere close to them, extend a warm hand of fellowship. Welcome them. 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 All right. What do we say to them, Gateway Church? All right. Whether you are inside or outside, this is brief information for you. I want to do a brief introduction of who we are. My name is Chidi Courage. I'm privileged by God to be the executive resident pastor of this lighthouse. Our lead pastor and spiritual father is Pastor George Izuwa. And our vision in a single word is empowerment. God said to our lead pastor, go teach my people strength. And we do that in all of our services via the prison worship. We are the preaching of God's word and we are the prayers. And I know that in the past one to two hours or three hours maximum, strength has been added into your system. And I know that's just a tip of the iceberg. All of our services on Wednesdays, on Sundays, there's always fire on this mountain to keep you in motion. Your life will never go down again. This is the church that turns small shots into big shots in a short time. And I know you are the next big thing that Potakot is about to celebrate. Can somebody say a good amen? Now, my special brand promise to you is that if you hang out with us for a maximum time frame of three months, you hear the word of God and you apply what is being taught. There is no gain saying. In three months, maximally, there will be a radical and a drastical shift 
in your life and your Christian adventure with Jesus. Do I have a witness in this house? Now, just in case you are wondering, which kind of church is this? They started by 9 o'clock. And by 12, they are still pushing at this. The choir, they craze. Everybody, they craze. That's because we're not a normal church. We're a spiritual defense academy where we offer you BSc brutality, MSc ruggedity, and PhD ferocity. I'm telling you, your life will never remain the same again in Jesus' mighty name. Okay, we want to welcome you officially to this awesome, amazing family. So please, whether you are inside or outside, with the direction of the ushers, carry your Bibles, carry your bags, carry your mobile devices, and walk up to the altar here. I want to give you a welcome handshake. Put your hands together for them, people of God, as they come. Come, come. Whether inside or outside, keep clapping as they come. From all the overflows, keep coming. Carry your Bibles and your bags. The ushers will direct you. You're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome. to fire, bumper to bumper, back to back. Straight forth your hand to this altar. I prophesy over your life by the invocation of Calvary sacrifice. I crush the negativity in your father's house. I crush the altars in your father's house. I crush the ordinances of your father's house. I crush the wickedness in your father's house. I crush the altars in your father's house. I crush the negative covenants in your father's in the name of Jesus Christ every priest every agent connected to darkness operating wickedness I want you to scream on top of your voice say my life will never be the result of human wickedness number two my life will never be the reward of number three my life will never be the result of human wickedness. Stretch forth your hand to this altar. I decree right now on the authority of Calvary's sacrifice. Anything in your life that is a product of human wickedness. Ariko de Giga Gaga. I invoke Calvary's sacrifice on a destructive assignment. Arise, Calvary. Crush everything in their life the result of wickedness in the name of Jesus hear me and I'm not joking if you walked in here with any sickness put your hand on the affected area you will see wonders now if you are here anything that hands cannot touch but you know something is wrong with you just place your hand on your forehead and declare that thing as I, as I pray I'm going to be invoking judgment. He said, for this purpose was the Son of God manifested that he might destroy the works. I told you on Friday that the works of the devil are destructible. They can, de they can be destroyed. They say you have a fibroid in your womb. They say you have a cyst in your body. They say you have moving objects in your body. 
you sleep and you see dangerous things in the dream oppressions of darkness and wickedness wherever the affliction is place your hand there if it's where you cannot place your hand place your hand on your head and i'm going to make an invocation of the cross of Calvary sacrifice on a destructive mission in your father's house watch the testimonies in the next seven days there is no distance in the spirit wherever you are inside outside even online i take authority over rheumatoid arthritis i take authority over the spirit of infirmity projected sicknesses projected diseases inherited sicknesses whatever is in your life that is running in your father's house right now i invoke calvary sacrifice on the destructive mission let it visit your affliction i said i invoke calvary sacrifice on the destructive mission look at the root of that affliction destroy the root of the affliction scatter the root of the affliction now in the name of jesus christ as i said before i began as i'm dropping my microphone this afternoon any stranger that walked in here with you is dropping off your body now in the name of jesus christ the preaching of the cross is foolishness to the gentiles but to us who are saved it is the power of god therefore i invoke the appearance of calvary sacrifice over every one head now over every one life inside and outside on a vengeance mission whatever looks like a prison yard situation around your life be judged by calvary be destroyed by calvary now and forever in the name of jesus between now and the next seven days enter a harvest of testimonies financial breakthroughs physical breakthroughs mental breakthroughs business breakthroughs in the name of jesus christ you are free to fly in jesus mighty name can somebody say it louder amen wherever you are lift up your hands and just thank him just thank him just thank him wherever you are thank him thank him thank him thank him not by power not by might but your spirit is moving grace is working for me not by power not by power not by mind but your spirit is moving we say Somebody jump into grace. Say not by not by not by power, not by mind, but your spirit is moving. Grace is one more time, one more time. Say not by power. works in the miraculous without the consciousness of your mind what is grace i taught you before grace is the riches of christ credited to your account when we say grace is working for me it means everything Calvary paid for paid into my life on friday when i was teaching you i told you it is substitution and identification so somebody's writing an exam for you he's getting the max crediting to your account he's getting the max crediting to your account he's getting the max crediting to your account they say you pass mathematics you pass biology you pass chemistry you pass physics you didn't write any somebody paid and credited into your account when you say grace is working for me you are saying calvary is working for me come on hey
is working, it is working, it is working great. Yeah, one more time. It is, it is, it is, it is working. Jesus, I want I want Sukate, Sukate, I'm in love, I'm in love, I'm in love. 
know who is happy. kingdom service be excited join the service you need sow your seeds pray put yourself in the script locate your script from the scriptures just do what is being taught you will see yourself flowing and flying in liberty let's share the goodness together in fellowship one to go because i'm a chosen generation the royal priesthood a holy nation a peculiar person surely because goodness and mercy is in hot pursuit of me all the days of my life and i'm blowing the house of the lord forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever amen greet two or three of your family offices before you leave the lord bless you hallelujah see you again on wednesday for the bible study